Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to this stage number 12, Jerome Aginla. Thank you, Peter. Thank you guys uh, very, very much. Um, this is such a huge, unique honor. Um, it's not something you prepare for. Coming out here, this is uh, so special. Um, I really want to thank the Flames organization, ownership. Uh, it's not lost in my family or I what it means to have um, my name hanging up in the rafters uh, with uh, you guys. And that was uh, that was one of the coolest uh, videos um, I've seen, and thank you, Lanny, for doing that. That was uh, truly awesome, and it means a ton. And I've always been a huge fan and have so much respect. As a rookie, one of the first things I would do entering every new building. I'd go out to the benches and, and you'd want to, I'd want to see the atmosphere and see the ice and, and see the seats of all the different buildings and compare it to how it looked uh, on TV. And I'd always look up and I would, I'd want to, you know, I'd, I'd see the names and see the tradition and, uh, you know, see if I knew them and see if, uh, if I could even pronounce their names. I know you're thinking, hey, mine might be a handful for some people. But, uh, you know, if I didn't, I would always ask, uh, you know, one of our assistant coaches, uh, the late Brad McCrimmond, uh, Rico Rich Preston, or the great hockey mind Al McNeil, you know, and they would always, they would always, they seem to know every single player, what, what position, uh, what they, what, what style of player, what, what they ate for, for lunch or dinner, you know, it was, they had a story about everybody and it was awesome. And, I really appreciated those times, and it's really cool to think uh, that I'm, you know, get to be part of the, the Flames tradition and, and uh, be, be up there. It's uh, very, very special. But looking up at those jerseys, with a player's fortunate enough to be recognized, everyone knows you don't succeed alone. I was blessed to play with amazing teammates and spend time around unbelievably dedicated hockey personnel creating friendships that forever have left their imprint on me. Thank you, guys. <laughs> but even long before that, all the way from youth hockey in St. Albert, I've had great teammates, parents, coaches, friends, and family that helped me every step of the way. I want to thank all of you. It, you've all been a huge, huge part of this. I want to thank my family, especially my mom, dad, Twyla, my wife, Kara, the kids, Jade, Tej, and Joe, it's been an amazing journey and sharing it with you has uh, truly been awesome and made it that much more special. I want to also thank uh, my former teammates and uh, I have a lot of family and friends in tonight and it means a ton to, to see you here today and you know, over this uh, last couple of days to share some memories and stuff, it's like, uh, Hockey's a great, great sport. You know, you compete on the ice together, you do so many things together. And if you don't see each other for so long, you know, we all, people go their own ways and stuff, but it's like, you, it's like we're just back there being kids again and it's like we just, uh, just saw each other. So thank you so much. It means so much uh, to me to see you guys and I know other family and friends here. Thank you guys. I have some very memorable moments that stand out. My first game in this building against Chicago, that was uh, truly awesome as an 18-year-old kid and getting to be on a, you know, center Theo Fleury and, and German Tethoff, it's, 
was something I will never, ever forget that first game. But I also got, you know, I got my first goal there. It was on there, pass from German Titov, right over there, low blocker on Eddie Belfour. It was awesome. <laughs> And I also got my 500th in this building, and you guys, uh... The one thing about the video, it kind of spoiled a little bit of what uh, I was going to tell you about my 500th goal and, and tell you I went end to end and went split the D like Mary Lemieux and went bar down, but I didn't. <laughs> it, it, it was a moldy one. I tried to pass to Glenny over there, cross crease, off a stick, off a skate. It was an ugly one, but I loved them all the same. It was... <laughs> but I do want to say, uh, you know, the, with that, I was on the outdoor rink uh, about a few weeks ago with my uh, son, uh, Joe, showing him some moves, some toe drags, some fakes, and, and all that stuff. And he says to me, uh, Dad, I'm like, yeah? And he says, you didn't really use any of these nice moves. And I, I'll admit, I'll admit I said, I'm like, come on, you're remembering me when I'm 39, come on, a little bit back, you know. <laughs> but they're pretty hard on me. Tease was a little nicer. He, he says when I showed him, he goes, uh, well, Dad, you only scored shooting. Why are you showing me these moves? <laughs> but no, it's awesome. They, uh, it's truly a pleasure to be uh, home and, and get to spend time trying to show them some stuff. And like I said, I want to get that video, Lanny. That, uh, that was awesome. Uh, when they give me a hard time. But taking this chance, it is, it's very special, but in reflecting on so many memories, I realized I played with only three guys for nine or 10 years here. And that's a lot of time spent together, practices, games, buses, planes, road trips. And I really appreciate all my teammates, but I want to give a special thanks to these three. One was Rob McGear. <laughs> Reggie, he, he sure was a tough competitor. Always worked so hard on and off the ice, and he was a natural leader. His D side amongst the boys right over there was known as the Tunnel of Doom. And it, and it was well earned. He'd catch a guy, he was obviously a big man, but for a big man he had quick feet. And they would think they were getting by him and just about the top of the circle to the hash marks, he'd get a hold of him. And he would ride him out right along the boards, right along the boards, right to about the, they would try to get away, but once he had him there's no getting away. He'd ride him right to the goal line, crush him right into the boards, and just for good measure, you'd make sure you landed on him. <laughs> and, and believe it or not, this was all legal back then, part of the rules. <laughs> he was truly one of the hardest defensemen to play, from our er to play against from our era, without question. Thank you, Reg. Another was Mika Kripasov. We all know what an exciting goal he was to watch in the net. He took us from a rebuilding team to a playoff team pretty much on arrival. He also helped us to lead us within one goal of the Stanley Cup. <laughs> That was on the ice. <laughs> but, but just as great as he was on, on the ice for us, he was just a great a teammate. He was a big kid. He would always stir the pot behind the scenes. You know, he'd sit at the back of the plane or the bus chuckling as one of us walked into one of his jokes. And he never got blamed. He always got away with it. Well, we caught on eventually, but, you know, we had uh, Peter Hanlon, our, our vice president and head of PR, fooled for many years. He, he, Peter didn't think he spoke English. 
And when, when he finally figured it out, I did, he had Peter convinced that uh, if he did interviews, he just couldn't perform. <laughs> Got him out of a ton and didn't work for me though, eh, Pete? But he was awesome and, and a huge uh, part of the success here. And lastly, Craig Conroy. He loved to tell the story about our first encounter. He didn't, me not liking him. <laughs> when we first met, he says, you, you heard him, he says, we walked in and I, I had an angry face on or something. We just met. Like, how does he know what my angry face is? <laughs> you know? Secondly, if there's any expression, it was not anger. It was shock. The Flames just traded our leading goal scorer, points leader, to get him. And I just looked around, who was behind him coming in the door? Like, who else? <laughs> Later, when I would ask him what happened before his time with the Flames, production-wise, he'd always claim he'd just been underutilized. But uh, I think you'd seen Jelly working out a little bit in the weight room and you realized, hey, you know what? It's not, a, it's not allergic to be in the weight room. That's what those things are for, eh? <laughs> he was a very skinny kid when he came. <laughs> but I'll admit, I was uh, shocked again as we played together. But this time it was for how great of a player he was. He's one, truly one of the most enjoyable teammates and centermen. He never got credit, you know, I don't think he got full credit for what a great two-way center he was. He was one of the fav... As a winger, when you play with him, he'd be like, oh, don't worry about our zone. I got it, Iggy, you just take off. I get it, you go. You know, I'm like, hey, this is awesome. <laughs> But truly, you know, not just a, a great player, and um, it's truly, however it started off, I hope, uh, uh, it wasn't true anyway, but <laughs> I'm not going to go there. It wasn't true. But any, well, part of it was. Um, <laughs> can't lie up here, right? <laughs> but anyway, he's truly one of my best friends and one of the best teammates uh, that I've ever played with, and uh, thank you so much, Connie. And I have, a, I have a lot of special memories in this flame jersey and the saddle dome, but I also want to share one of the hardest moments of my career, the day I knew I wasn't going to play in the NHL again. Not because my t playing time was done, I played a good while and enjoyed it till the end, but because I thought I realized I wasn't going to win. As an athlete, you push and you push and you try to be positive and always envisioning it, it will happen. I believe you have to be that way in, in life and in hockey, so I'll admit it bothered me a bit. But after taking some time to reflect on my career with my family and friends, and adding a little dose of gratitude, I know I did win. And I'm not talking about the goal that didn't count in game six of this. Stanley Cup Finals that Jelly scored. I won over and over again every day for the 20 years I played in the NHL. I won all the days of minor hockey growing up in a program like St. Albert, then playing junior in a great hockey place like Kamloops, where I learned and grew so much. I won playing professionally in a first-class organization, the Calgary Flames, that's built upon family, community, and leadership. At the end of the day, to me, a big part of life is about memories, friendships, challenges, and giving your all. I got to do all that here in Calgary with the Flames, with the fans, and my teammates. I did win. God has been very good to me and my family. We've been truly blessed.
thank you to all the fans. You guys were amazing over 16 years. The support was truly awesome to my family and I. It's been awesome living here. Thank you guys. And we look forward to watching many, many great Flame Cup runs ahead. Go Flames, go. Thank you. Excellent. Well done, buddy. we've all been waiting for. Number 12, 